without further ado, Drew Jones. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Ty. Thank All right, everybody. This is such a hotbed of innovation and good ideas. That's why I wanted to be here. So this is the chance to talk a little bit about what we've been up to at Sustainability Institute. And I want to just give first, I'm going to give you the big picture context. So pardon me for the professor time for a second before we get to play a little bit. Um, the context here is sustainability. And in short, I think of it as 6.8 billion people. How many Earths? All right, one Earth. So that's just, I think that's the challenge. The opportunity side of sustainability, of course, is 6.8 billion people who I think, in their heart of hearts, want sustainability. They want a world that sustains life on Earth indefinitely. It's be we are Earth, it is part of us, this is what we all want. So we have this great opportunity to tap innovation and a lot of the creativity and kind of bring out the best of the aspiration of lots of people. So there's a side of this which is going to be about, oh my god, 6.8 billion people, one Earth, what are we going to do about it? But also I think we need to come from a place of how do we tap into the best of all of us as you are doing in your own work. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the thing that I'm tapping into and the work that we're doing at Sustainability Institute. And really what it is, is helping the negotiations that are going on right now for one sustainability issue, which is global climate change. We have a simulator that the US State Department, the folks who are the special envoys who are going to Copenhagen, Jonathan Pershing and Todd Stern were the people who were appointed to do it. They're using the model that's on the computer right here in order to help them set the US position and negotiate for in Copenhagen in December of this year. So I'll say a little bit about where I'm coming from. I'm part of Sustainability Institute. We're a 10-person not-for-profit organization. The main approach that we use is just learning. And when I say learning, I mean how can we accelerate our ability to respond to the changes that we see. When I say we need to invest in our capacity for learning, I mean faster response, getting ourselves together to do something about it. And when I say learning, I mean building the capacity to take effective action. The way that we go about this approach of learning um, is really we're focusing on using simulation models. And the reason we're doing that is climate change is being driven by decisions that were made a long time ago and play out over the next century in ways that our brains just don't do handle really well. We need tools to help us play out how these complex systems are going to work. So we use simulators. So the models you're about to see, we publish the equations for anybody to adapt. We publish the interface so that any of you guys who are web developers could make your own interface. And we publish them online so that they could be translated into different languages. So I'm going to show you some of those simulators. So this is a mathematical model which is going to play out for us different scenarios for what we do to address climate change. On the left here are three different parts of the world. The blue line is the, the richest countries in the world. United States, European Union, Japan, South Korea, Australia, Canada, uh, uh, Russia. Those countries, their emissions of carbon dioxide, this is the stuff from fossil burning coal, oil, and gas that's going into the atmosphere, that's collecting, that's warming the earth. So that, that co those countries are um, responsible for 74% of all the emissions that have ever been created. Anyone have a sense of what fraction of the population is responsible for that 74%? 30, it's 20, it's right 20. Here's the red line. Who's the red line? India, China, India, Indonesia, Brazil, the emerging economies, which is about half the global population. This is 30% of the population. These are the people most vulnerable to climate change. Island nations, Africa, much of Asia, South America. If this all plays out, here's where it's going to go. Growing into the future. This graph is not how much is getting sent into the atmosphere. It's how much collects there and is warming the earth. Anyone know the goal that we have for what the concentration of carbon dioxide is? The scientists are saying 350. 350 parts per million. 
This blue line is 350. We're sitting here today, 378, 380, somewhere in there. We're above the blue line. Our mission to sustain life on Earth is to reduce the orange line, which if we do that, we'll do this down to the blue line. Let's, uh, so what we do is I'm gonna go over here to, this is the little slider, it's too small to really see, but you'll watch as I move the slider, what I'm doing is I'm capping emissions in 2060, 2070, 2060, 2040, 2030. Do you see the blue line coming down? All right, so it's 2040. What if we cap in 2030? What if we cap, I'm going all the way back to 2010. Okay, so there it is. We cap in 2010. Did anyone notice what was going on over here? Very little. So what it happens is, and the reason that we're using this simulator, as opposed to there are eight other really great models, but they take about a week to run. So when the negotiators say, hey, what if China does this and that, they have to go off and they, you know, they're huge models and they're with supercomputers. What we're doing and is to take those huge models, replicate the key parts of them in a much smaller model, more aggregated model that captures the same behavior. As such, we can do this really fast. So when we move from 2100 down to 2010, you watch the orange line. This is the marginal net contribution if the developed world were to stop growing its emissions now. So here we are, 2020. It grows till 2020, then it's flat, and then we're aiding at about 650 parts per million if we cap then. Let's do the same thing with these developed world. What's actually happening? It's still going up. We're slowing the rate of growth, which is a good thing, and we need to be doing that, and it creates a better world. I'll play it down the line. This creates, instead of six, four and a half degrees centigrade temperature increase, it creates, what is this, 2.9, like three degrees. The red line is global temperature, Going up, the blue line is if we all cap emissions. We would have temperature pass a goal of two degrees centigrade, which is the blue, the, or the green line. We would pass that over the next couple um, decades. This makes things better. It's easier to adapt to a world that's warming blue fast instead of red fast. And what we're gonna actually do is start reducing, it's basically about 5% a year or six or seven, if we start reducing 5% a year every year, starting as soon as possible, let's do this right, that's not right, all right. What that gets us, so what this says is, okay, we're gonna cap emissions, they're gonna grow, and then they're gonna start falling to get reductions, get emissions down that actually succeeds at leveling emissions around 450 parts per million. What else do we need to throw in the mix? Anyone know I just reduced fossil fuel emissions. What are the other emissions? Nitrous oxide really helps, so we can reduce that one. See this N2 over index, so we can reduce that. That actually doesn't reduce carbon dioxide levels, but it's another greenhouse gas. What is the other source of carbon dioxide? Cows is methane. Okay, I'll reduce the methane. Thank you. What's the other source of greenhouse gases? I mean, of, of carbon dioxide. Deforestation. When you have trees, which are made of carbon, and burn them in order to make agricultural land, that goes into the atmosphere. It's about 20%. So when we add that in, watch the orange line. We're going to do better. Here we go. Reduce deforestation. Down, 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 down. So we do a little bit better. And... What that gets us, if we do all of that, is temperature, which is aiming down below two degrees centigrade. That's why what the goal is nationally and what Obama said he was gonna try to do is to create the global conditions. And the point of this is not just in the United States, but around the world to reduce emissions on the order of 80% by 2050.